Death is something that we undergo and passively experience as biological reality. I mean, the biologists can tell us that the body is basically programmed to shut down after a certain period of time, you know. Death, in one sense, is easily understood as a natural phenomenon, and it is something that will and does occur to everyone. On the other hand, uh, we are not just nature, we are not just physical nature, we are not just body, we are spirit. And since the, it is the one person who is both person and nature, animal and rational, since it is the one who is a person who undergoes death, death will not just have the passive elements, something happening to a body, like death is something that happens to Rover, Death is also something that a human being actively does. In other words, uh, Father Rahner says that death is not simply something that happens to a human person. Death is also a culminating act of a person's life. Death is a distinctively human act related to the particular, peculiar nature of human existence. As the final moment of a free personal history, death is seen as a decisive act of human freedom in which the person can either accept or reject the mystery of God and thereby put the final seal on his or her personal history and destiny. If we could not do this, there would be no real freedom. You can see what Father Honor means when he says that. Um, who are you, really? Who are you? Are you not in large part, isn't your identity determined in large part by the decisions you make during your life? Um, I'm a Dominican priest. I've been one for 26 years now. Um, I can't go up to somebody and say, you know what, um, of course I'm a Dominican priest, I've been one for a long time, but really who I really am is something entirely different from that. That'd be absurd. It's absurd, isn't it? Well, I married uh, this woman 30 years ago, of course she has no sh part of who I really am. It's absurd. Now, your identity is many, in many ways constituted by your decisions. I'm unthinkable now except as a Dominican priest. That wasn't true 40 years ago, but it is true now, right? Um, you're unthinkable outside of the context of the decisions that you've made with your life. Now, suppose we had endless life. I mean, suppose it were possible for me to say, well, I think I'm going to do something different now. I've done this Dominican thing long enough. I think I want to drive cabs and interview interesting people. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to spend a lot of time in diners and cafes and get to know, you know get to know a more interesting variety of people than you know, run across in academic seminars. All right. So this is. <laughs> so I do that for 20 years or 50 years, and then I do then I do something else. Now I want to be a swami in India, and I'll take the next 75 years and do that. And now I want to be a newspaper editor, and now I think I'll get married, and now I think I'll divorce, and now I think I'll get married again. And, and then 400 years later, you'd, who are you? You see what I mean? If you could re, totally redo your own, we've got a genius and a desire for self-invention, you know, reinventing ourselves again. America is part of the country it is because we believe that it's sort of a good thing to reinvent yourself. That's all right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you, if you absolutize that, you see, if you make that um, uh, endless, you end up having no self at all. See that? If you, there's never a moment when you can never say, this is who I am, I can do no other, here I stand, this is my life, this is what I'm about. If there isn't a moment when that happens, we, have, we may be free to change our minds about everything, but we're not free to be any definite person. We're not free to be a human being. You see? The freedom to be somebody real is tied to finitude. 
and tied to a final decision about what your life is all about. That moment where you decide what your life is all about is theological death. And it may or may not coincide with biological death. See? Karl Rahner has argued that if it were, that it is not the mere fact of death that is caused by sin, but the present way in which we experience death as a mystery of darkness and threat. If sin distorts and darkens all our experience in life, it is consistent that it distorts and darkens our final experience in death. For both Karl Rahner and the present Holy Father, the free act by which we give ourselves over into the hands of God's love and mercy is the central mystery of the theology of death, and it is the way believers enter into the dying of Christ. Seen in this way, the basic mystery of death is already anticipated throughout life in the little dyings by which we give ourselves over to God in charity. The death of Jesus, briefly. How does he die? How does he sum up his freedom? He dies saying, Abba, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That's the free gift of himself to his father and he intends it to be definitive, Abba, Father. Now this is a great act of trust and faith because the crucifixion is of course an act which the uh, people believed was a definitive proof that God was not his father. You know, uh, Deuteronomy says, cursed be he who hangs on a tree. The crowd around Jesus took that as a sign that God had cursed Jesus and not blessed him. But in the face of all external evidence, including that of Deuteronomy, Jesus says, Abba, Father. That's who he is. That's the moment of his freedom. That's when he declares himself to be son. Forever. <laughs>